Hello and welcome back and today we want to compare the brand new QNAP TS253D with the Acer Store Nimbus Store 2. These two NASes are very similar in architecture and I can see why a number of you may be having difficulty choosing between them. We've seen recently lots of new hardware coming out from all the big brands but time and time again we found that the older generation of any series will often be a lot more you know, popular for a number of you because of certain hardware advantages or because you're not interested in the latest bells and whistles and what you want to go for is a network attached storage device that works for you. So the reason we're looking at these two is they're actually surprisingly similar. The Nimbus Store 2 arrives with an Intel Celeron dual core processor, a J4005 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz and with DDR4 memory, two gig by default that can be upgraded to eight. The newer generation QNAP arrives with an Intel Celeron as well, but the J4125 quad core uh, to 2.0 gigahertz to 2.7 at first, and 4 gig of DDR4 memory that can be upgraded to 8. So both of them have got a CPU that can support 4K transcoding and support 1080p transcoding. They can both support virtual machines. They can both support their own surveillance software. They can both support 4K media being distributed via an HDMI port on the rear. They can both support a whole range of hardened software advantages in 2020. So if you are looking for a brainless NAS, or you're looking for a NAS where the internal software doesn't make a vast amount of difference, and what you're caring about is that it is going to do the job you want it to do in the background, these two are near enough identical to you. I mean, there are differences that we will talk about later on, but if you're upgrading from like an ARM or a J-series, basically a budget, budget NAS, and you've had one of those for quite a few years and you want to move upwards, Either one of these two is going to suit you, and given the price difference between them of 100 to 150 quid if you shop around, there's a lot to be done with that money that you save that you can plough into storage media or utilise in your network environment. But if you are interested in using the software that is bundled with the cost of your NAS, that's when things change. Both of them arrive with different software inside, with the Acer Store arriving with ADM, their own graphical user interface and software platform. It features BTRFS, it features an entire app center, and it also arrives with client applications for desktop systems uh, of Windows and Mac, as well as mobile apps for iOS and Android. There's lots of things it can do with regards to streaming multimedia, looking at your photos, listening to your music and more. It is a you know, a well-developed software platform that has been evolved very, very well recently, as well as the HDMI output on the rear, allowing you to have a completely parallel running HDMI system for enjoying your movies, watching Kodi, watching your movies on Plex and more. But there's no avoiding the fact that the QNAP does have the more evolved feeling software. It does more. They have more unique applications. They've got AI photo recognition. They've got two dedicated surveillance applications in QBR Pro and Surveillance Station. Their own dedicated virtual machine tool, whereas Acer Store utilizes Virtual PC. Um, uh, virtual Box, sorry. Um, the QNAP has more apps behind it and more development into its software. And a lot of the money that you're paying for the QNAP is to go towards both the hardware and the software. So it's understandable that it would have a higher price point. But once again, if you're not going to use those apps, it may not be a benefit to you. It doesn't take advantage of BTRFS, but at the same time, it has better backup options overall for cloud, NAS to NAS, NAS to USB, and more. If we turn them around, we can see a lot of hardware functionality has been utilized on the rear of these devices if we bring them nice and forward there for you. Now, both of them arrive with 2.5 GBE. That means that both of them support um, two and a half times the traditional network Ethernet seen in other devices, but they both support link aggregation up to five gigabit Ethernet. And if you've got a smart managed switch or you plan on upgrading the rest of the network equipment in your home or office environment, this will open up the bandwidth on these devices for you. But it's worth highlighting the better CPU on the QNAP and the better memory amount by default will result in better performance overall via external network connections as well as internally too. They both arrive with HDMI 2.0i and both of them will output 60 frames per second 4K which is great to hear as well as transcoding internally via the network and the internet. But once again the software of the HDMI out is seemingly better on QNAP with HD Station than it is on the Acer Store. The Acer Store ADM portal is very, very good with a huge array of apps to choose from, almost too many, one might argue. But 
they're still very equal in terms of 4K output, but you're still gonna have better performance with that internal hardware on this device. And with multitasking, and particularly when you've got multiple concurrent users accessing the device at the same time, you will see the benefit in that internal hardware. Lastly, we can talk about upgradability. Both of them have got USB ports, but that's generally for external devices. And although there are more USB 3s on the Nimbus store, which is great to hear for you know connected up network upgrades where you can add 2.5 and 5 GBE to this Nimbus store with those device those ports as well as external storage. The QNAP has US more USB ports, but USB 2 inclusive of that, which are only really good for peripherals. You can expand it more with more expansions available from QNAP, but with only two USB ports, one on the front, one on the back, you are a little limited there, especially if you use one of those network upgrades. But the biggest upgrade is that one. The QNAP arrives with a PCIe Gen 2 times 4 slot, which allows you to add 10 GBE, 5 GBE ports. It allows you to add M2 SSD caching or NVMe SSD caching. It allows you to add NVMe for raw storage. Uh, so you can have a combo card in the QM2 series that allow you to connect via 10 GBE, edit on the NVMe, so you can edit photo and video files on, you know, two, three, four thousand megabits per uh, megabytes per second SSD, and then use the hard drives inside for archiving or distribution. You can create a multi-tiered backup strategy and more, and reinvent your workflow with this device. But it's worth highlighting if you're not going to use those features or functionality in the next three to five years. Why pay extra? And that's the main point here. The QNAP is more expensive and brings a lot more hardware to the table, but it's up to you if you're going to utilize it and if you actually need it. It's one thing to prepare for the worst. It's one thing to make sure you've got it if you need it. But if you're never going to use it and you know deep down you're never going to use it, use the money you save towards bigger drives or improving your network equipment or getting some of those 5G upgrades for this. There is, of course, the Nimbus Store 4.2. But with a Nimbus Store 4, you've got a quad-core CPU, and things would be a lot fairer in this comparison. But we've got to go two against two. Ultimately, it's up to you which one best deserves your data, because it's a lot more about what you need in your hardware than what you should really go for as a brand. Because if you're going to go for software, the QNAP's going to win. But if you're going to go for hardware, things are a lot more level between them. And then it becomes a question of just how high you want the high to be in terms of your network performance and simultaneous connected users and apps. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you have, click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description to learn more about these devices and more in 2020. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.